Well, this uh, initial review, Victoria, seems to keep getting longer and longer and longer, but I do want to keep going back over that and realizing that, let's say I know that somebody lost their uh, booklet, they can always go back into one of these videos, right? Scroll through or scrub through to the bones page, pause, write all the notes down, scrub through to the muscles and do the same thing, right? And that goes for everybody in here. If you happen to lose something or you just haven't been working or you were lazy, you can catch up because it's always going to be here every single day. That's one of the reasons why I review. So we started off with the bones, and the bones do four big things for us. What are the four big things that the bones do for us, Braden? Make red blood cells. That's one. Protect us. That's two. Dawson. Give us our shape. That's three. Last one, Haley. They help us with movement in conjunction with the muscular system, right? Now, it was really easy. What are the main organs? Well, your bones are the main organs. You don't have to uh, necessarily memorize all 206 bones in the body. That's not something that will make you do. But you do need to be familiar with a few of the bones that they might mention. Um, like the skull and the ribs and the spine or the vertebrae, I think, are the big three. Um, but they might throw something in there like a femur or a tibia or something. It could be in there, but I think they would give you some ideas of what's going on. But the big thing about the bones, and hopefully when you're doing your project today, your main focus when you start working on the bones are these four things. They give us our shape. They protect us. They allow for not movement. Fix that while we're here, I guess. Movement um, with the help of muscles. And that's your hinges, joints, your ball and socket, and they make red blood cells. Everybody feel good about that? So we went from the bones, and then we moved into the muscular system, which I think is probably, well, that's not what we don't want that. Uh, how do you go away with that thing? Go away. There we go. Muscular system. What's the main organ? Well, we said the muscles are the main organs. That's pretty easy to do. And we gave some examples. Now, you do need to understand these for certain. Heart, diaphragm, the skeletal muscles. You, you need to know those words. Skeletal muscles are attached to the skeleton, and as Haley's already told us, that's how we move, right? The skeleton and the muscular system help us move, and the muscular system's all about movement, isn't it? Your heart is a muscle. It's also part of a circulatory system that we're going to learn about today, and it moves blood through your body. When we talked about the digestive system, we saw that there's smooth muscle around different parts of our body and our digestive system that helps move the food through our body. Now, the muscular system doesn't just help us move noon. It also helps us to make heat so that our body stays at a very um, like base temperature so we're not too cold or not too hot and all the functions that are going in our body can do what they're supposed to do. And then again, if I'm making the project, I guarantee you I'm going to have voluntary muscles and involuntary muscles. I don't know how I'm going to do that just yet, but I can guarantee you that's going to be in there. So you guys need to think about that. So again, muscles help you move. That should be on your project. They generate heat. That should be on your project. They move blood through your body. That's probably going to be on your project when you're doing the circulatory system. Moving food through your body is part of the digestive system, but you have to have the muscles in there somewhere. And then I'm not too sure how you're going to show that it regulates temperature, but I'm sure that you can come up with some creative way to do that. We moved into the digestive system, and that's when we started saying, whoa, hey, time out. There's a lot more organs than we had on the previous ones. But again, and I, I said this yesterday in all three classes, if you really just kind of close your eyes and walk yourself through the process of eating that piece of pizza, the pizza goes in my mouth. Okay, I have to learn this word salivary glands, but we all know that our mouth starts to water. Salivary glands, easy. I chew it up with my teeth, the salivary glands gets it wet, and then the tongue helps me to swallow it. Where does it go then, class? Where does it go after I swallow it, Nicola? After the esophagus, Jada, where does it go? In the stomach. After the stomach, where does it go? And what does the small intestines do? It gets the nutrients out. Then into the large intestine, which their job is to do what, Mason? Take out the water, and then it comes out the other side. Really? It's not hard, is it? Now, we can definitely do without the other side part on, on our project. We'd prefer not to see that. So don't get the brown Play-Doh out and think you're going to be cool. We don't need to do that. All right? Moving on. I only say that because I can see some wheels spinning in some kids' heads in here, and I'm like, no, nah, we don't need to go there. Excretory system. This one should be super fast, right? You've got kidney, liver, and your um, bladder, and the ureters, which are the tubes that run to different places in your body to help you get rid of liquid waste. That's pretty much it. That's it, right? That's it. Kidney, liver, or two kidneys, 
liver, ureters, and your bladder. Your bladder fills up, you get rid of liquid waste. That's pretty simple, right? You have to, you have to get rid of solid waste, you have to have a way of getting rid of liquid waste, which led us into yesterday, how do we get rid of gas waste? And that gas comes out as we breathe in and we breathe out. Again, Dawson, walk yourself through breathing. How does the air even... Somebody said yesterday it starts in the lungs. No, it's like saying digestion starts in the stomach. It's got to get in there somehow. Well, how does it get in there? Mouth and your nose. Then you've got to learn a word here, the trachea. Right? And then it goes into your lungs and your bronchioles. There's another new word you've got to learn. We'll talk about that. Um, and then you have that diaphragm, which is a muscle that allows you to take air in and it pushes air out. And what is its main function? Take in oxygen, get rid of carbon dioxide. Plain and simple. Respiration, not too hard. That brings us to today, and we are going to talk about the circulatory system. And it's funny that the muscular system ended with the heart, because it is a muscle. But the heart's also like the central focus of the circulatory slash cardiovascular system. So you might see it written, uh, hopefully I did it in the notes. And I may have to bring that, I can't get it down low enough, hang on a second. So I, sorry, I had to fix that. Circulatory slash cardiovascular system. Those are the same thing. I put those both in there because you know what probably happens. In one question they call it the cardiovascular system. Two questions later they're called the circulatory system. And I guarantee you, if I didn't teach you both words, somebody would be raising their hand, rightfully so, going, I don't know what this word is. So they're interchangeable. For us, they're interchangeable. The circulatory slash cardiovascular system is interchangeable. I'll come back to this slide in just a second. Look in the background of the picture there. We all see the heart, right? But also, we should see some red and some blue. Those are our veins in our arteries and that's a huge part of that because if you talk about not just circulatory but cardiovascular cardio is heart vascular is the vessels and we're talking about blood vessels there again for us it's okay to use circulatory and cardiovascular interchangeably it's it's okay because they both have something to do with moving blood through our body and if something's moving obviously there's a big muscle involved in that somewhere right and you know what the muscle is. It's the heart. It's the central thing that we see here. Again, it's not just that it's moving blood. It's moving the blood, but inside of the blood is oxygen that's being transported from your respiratory system. Inside the blood is nutrients that came from where? Where do the nutrients come from that are in the blood? We've already studied this system. Haley. Digestive system. There you go. And we have to have this system that transports all this stuff around our body, right? We're not a one-celled organism where it's all encompassed. We have all these different specialized systems that do special things. But if I just breathe in and breathe out and get oxygen into my lungs or I digest food, if there's not something moving it around, it does no good, right? So we have to have something to move it around, and it, all of this stuff is transported around in our blood. And that brings me to, I need to find the word if I can get to it. Uh, there we go. The transport system. Now, I briefly mentioned this yesterday, right? When we talk about a transport system, I have to have a way for all of this stuff to get moved around my body. And I promise you, I see some of you trying to write all this down at one time. Don't. It's all on the slide for you, I promise. We have to have some system that moves all of this stuff around the body for us. And our transport system is our circulatory system. So we'll write this word transport system down in just a moment. So again... Our heart is the main organ, but there's two others, well, three really. And these are the, when you say cardiovascular, these are the vessels. Veins, arteries, and then capillaries, I'm going to put in there too. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Veins carry blood to the heart. So the arteries are full of all of the oxygen. The veins are taking that blood back to the heart so we can move it to the lungs to go get more oxygen and get rid of that carbon dioxide. Um, and it's important that we know those two different things. So let's take a look at some of that. Here we go. Here are our organs 
of the circulatory system. Our heart, I don't think anybody's going to be shocked about that one. Arteries, now I remember that arteries carry blood away from the heart because artery starts with A and away starts with A. Veins, they carry blood back to the heart, so the heart can then pump that blood to the lungs to help you release all that carbon dioxide. And then capillaries. Capillaries, as we'll learn when we move down in the notes, are these teeny tiny little blood vessels because if you look at how big the blood vessels are in your arm and you can see some of those, can that really run up into my finger? No, I have to have smaller blood vessels. Can that make it to the like the surface of my skin or into the ear or even in my eyelid? Could you? I mean, would, would you? You would look weird with big veins in your eyelid, right? You have to have these smaller things called capillaries. Think about your eyeball. Think about your eyeball. If you've ever been to the doctor and they shine that light in your eye, and you can kind of see this reflection, and you see all these little spider webs everywhere. Those are the capillaries in your eyeball where all the blood's being taken to the different parts of your eye. You have to have smaller blood vessels, and those are the capillaries. I'm going to put blood up here, although blood is not necessarily an organ, quote-unquote. Um, blood is uh, not an organ, but it's tissue and liquid, but obviously it's a huge part of the circulatory system and something that I think is very important. So, Braden, when I take the heart, arteries, veins, capillaries, and blood, and I put them all together, I get this thing called a transport system. Unicellular organisms do not have transport systems. This is a multicellular organism thing, right? It's kind of like specialized cells. If you see something about a transport system, it's going to have to be a multicellular organism because unicellular organisms don't need to transport things around, do they? It's one cell. We need a way to transport or move. Transport means to move. We need a way to move things around our body. If I can't move the oxygen from my lungs to the different parts of my body, it's going to be a real short day. If I can't move the nutrients from the awesome Chick-fil-A that I just ate around my body, it might be a little bit longer day, but eventually I'm going to run out of energy and I would no longer be here, right? You have to be able to move those things around your body and you do that through a transport system and our transport system is the cardiovascular system or the circulatory system. Maya, I don't think it shocks anybody that the heart is like the main one, right? That's the main organ. We know that. I mean, when you start talking about the circulatory system or especially when you say cardiovascular, when you see that word cardio, you already start thinking about the heart. The heart is what moves the blood. And if it's moving something, you know it's probably a muscle. So, and it is. The heart is a big muscle. It moves the blood around the body. Arteries are what takes the blood away from the heart. So, all this super oxygen-rich blood comes into the heart, and the heart says, hey, I need to get this to all different parts of the body. So, I'm going to push this out pretty quickly through the arteries. Your arteries are going to have to be a little bit thicker because of that. They, need, they put up with a lot more pressure than um, your veins have to. And your, your heart's really trying to pump that out and quickly and get it to the different parts of your body because all of the stuff that's in it is super important for your survival. Your veins are what takes blood back to the heart. Now, don't think that veins are not important, right? If all this unoxygenated blood, this darker blood is coming back because it's not super bright red because it's not full of oxygen, it's got to go back to the lungs, right? to get rid of that carbon dioxide and take back in more oxygen and then go back to the heart and get pumped through the body again. And again, all of this blood being filtered through your liver and, your, and things are going through your kidneys to make sure that you are filtering out all the other waste products from your blood. Um, it's going through your digestive system. That's where capillaries are really big and picking up all the nutrients that you need. And again, capillaries are just very tiny blood vessels. Think about it. You can't have big, giant blood vessels inside of your eyelids. You can't have big, giant blood vessels running through your entire digestive system. You need smaller blood vessels, and that's what capillaries are. You need smaller blood vessels, let's spell that correctly down here, um, so that they can reach the tinier places in your body 
that large blood vessels could not reach. So we will stop there for the circulatory system and be back with the next video.